Hey guys, Josh Mall back with you here with Swimming Pool Science and today I'm going to talk you through programming an Pentair and Teleflow and Teleflow XF pool pump. Here we go everybody, you ready? Let's do this. Now one of the most important things we got to do first and foremost is we always make sure this protective cover is closed when we are done operating the pump. So when you're done, make sure you get this closed always to protect that because this will get damaged by the sun. All right. Let's go through the programming steps, everyone. All right, guys, let's do this. First couple things I wanna show you is we got two kind of important buttons here. Um, the most important button here is our start stop button here. You'll see that in green and start, red and stop. And above that is a little amber light that will come on when the pump is active. Now, if this pump is deactivated, meaning that amber light is off, this pump will never come on unless someone comes out here and physically turns that on. So that's almost as good as having this thing unplugged from the wall. It's like trying to use your toaster if it's not plugged in um, and you're in the bathtub. So um, that's, the, that's the most important thing that no matter what you're doing on this pool pump, when you're done, um, you want to make sure that that light is on and this thing's active. You'll see here when it's on, it says running right here. When it shuts off, it says stopped. Okay. Uh, next thing we're going to do, let's go into the menu here. Uh, we'll start with settings. We'll hit select. Pump address. Now we don't ever mess with this unless we have multiple variable speed pumps tied to a control system like a Pentair Easy Touch. We leave that alone. That's default. Coming next, the time. Super simple to set. Pretty straightforward. Select. Change the time. I use my up and down arrows and then I use my right and left arrows to move through the minutes and the hours. Now with AM and PM, you have to scroll through on the hours. And then when we're done, we hit enter. All right, finish with that. We're gonna hit escape. That's gonna take us back here to settings. Um, let's hit enter again. Let's keep going through, or let's hit select rather. Go back through pump address. We got the time, AM, PM. Um, we can hit select and you can change that to a 24 hour clock. So instead of it being 5 PM, it would show 1700 hours. Um, same deal, you use your up and down arrows. Scrolling down. Temperature unit settings, so Fahrenheit or Celsius, hit um, select, change that, enter when you're done. Contrast level, it's up to you. I usually do that as a default. That's kind of a preferential setting. That's just on the screen right here. It just changes the, um, the contrast of the screen. Pick your language. Now, Minimum speed and maximum speed. This thing will run as low as 450 RPMs. You'll never even be able to hear it running. And in fact, um, I don't advise everybody to do this, but when it's running at low speed, usually uh, below about 750 RPMs, you can actually uh, open up the uh, pump lid and empty it. You can do a few other things that normally you'd have to have the pump shut off for. But um, And this thing will normally pick up a prime after you seal it back up. But um, you can run this thing all the way down to 450 RPMs and you won't even hear it running. The only way you'll know is by looking um, at the water to see that it's running. Um, we keep that the same. Now the maximum RPM, that's a little more important. Um, this one's set to near max. Maximum RPM on this one goes all the way up to 3450. It won't go any higher than that. Um, and that's because this pump is used to run some other uh, features like a swim jet and a few other things. So, um, but for normal um, normal filtering, we really don't need to go that far. That gives you a, um, a full three plus horsepower of water uh, pumping on this thing, which for most average size filters is going to be too much. Um, but we'll get into that later on a different video. We're just going through programming on this one. Um, let's escape out of here. Let's move down to our next, um, our next thing to set. Speeds one through eight. Now, We've got one, two, three, four that we can do quick touch on up here, but we have eight additional speeds hidden back here in the menu. When I'm doing the programming, my normal schedule, my normal schedule speeds that I run, I run all the way up in, I, I program up in five and six, and that way nobody can come and use these buttons to kind of goof around or mess with them. Um, so when you're going in here to program a speed, hit um, enter, I mean select, because I always get these two buttons confused, and they've done a better job on the IntelliFlow 2 pumps, the new ones, one of the big things they changed was the labeling on these buttons to make it less confusing so that I don't get confused when I'm programming. So we hit select. Now you have disabled. That means um, that that's not going to come on. That's deactivated. You've got a couple other options here. You've got schedule. Um, let's come back to that. Okay, we're back. 
So we're just going to select schedule the program at a time in speed five. Once these are down, error to move to the next thing on the menu. Now this is where we get to pick what speed or what RPM the motor is going to run. Let's hit select. We can amp that up by the thousands. We can change it by the hundreds. Tie the tens and by the fives. So you can pick a good RPM to run. And uh, just for the heck of it, let's call it, uh, we'll just run it at 2000 RPMs. So we get speed five set at 2000 RPMs. Now that that's set and I press enter, that's locked in. Come down here, now we gotta pick a start time. What time is that gonna fire up? Um, for me, we're running high speed which will say our 2000 RPMs, that's gonna be our high speed. I like to run that when the electricity is inexpensive. So let's set that for 12 midnight. So we can hit select. 12 midnight, zero, zero, enter. Down arrow to scroll down to the stop time. Select. Let's set that to run until 3 a.m. Once again, I'm just using my arrows to go up, down, back and forth. When I'm done, I want to lock it in. I hit enter. That's locked in. Now we've got a schedule time, 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. running schedule at 2000 RPMs. Um, so now we're done with that. Let's hit escape. That'll take us back to speed the, where we can pick our speeds. Let's go to speed six. Now it's funny because you use the down arrows to go up the different speeds and the up arrows to go down the different speeds. So it's kind of confusing, but not a big deal. We're going to hit select. We're going to change that from disabled to schedule. Enter. That's locked in. Down arrow gets us our speed. This is going to be our low speed. So just for the heck of it and just, just for demonstration's sake, let's take that and we'll run that at 1,000 RPM, nice and slow. And we got mosquitoes out here, so be careful, everybody. Make sure you got your mosquito repellent. Hitting enter. That's locked in. Down arrow. Pick a start time. Well, we got the low speed, and the great thing about these is when you're running low speed, it uses a fraction of the electricity. So we can run this all day during the day, and even though the electricity is more expensive, we're using such a small fraction of it that our electric bill is still going to go down significantly. So let's turn this, and we're going to start it to run at uh, uh, 7 a.m. Enter. Okay, that's locked in. Scroll down to the stop time. Select. And let's run that till... 7 p.m. Enter. So we're locked in. We're on schedule to run 1,000 RPM from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Now the way the math works out, and I'll get into it deeper in, 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 in another video, but if I want to move half as much water, um, it uses one-eighth the amount of electricity. If I want to move twice as much water, it uses eight times more electricity. So um, that's one of the that's one of the great ways these variable speed pumps work to your advantage with saving you a lot of money. Is that they um, the, the way the math and the science works out? It's just it's just cheaper the slower you run them. All right, let's hit escape. Let's go back here. Speed six. Let's go back to speed one here because you have some extra options on speeds one through four. Okay, so let's hit select. This says manual. That means if I come out here and hit this button, at this pump, whatever I hit here, um, which is good for um, 750 RPM, I hit the speed one button, this pump's going to run at 750 RPM until the next time it's supposed to shut off. Now, if you remember, we programmed this pump to run from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. during the day. The chime shows 5 p.m. right now. That means if I, if I run this in manual, this pump will now run until 7 p.m. when it's supposed to shut off again. And then it reverts back to its normal programming. So it's going to come on at midnight again and run till 3 a.m. just like we had set up. Um, so that's manual. Let's now go to the next one. Schedule, we know what that is. We went through that. That means seven days a week it's going to do whatever schedule we programmed in just like we did on speed speeds five and six. Next one we go to, egg timer. Now this is one where you can set it. Let's go ahead and choose that. We'll hit enter. We'll scroll down, 750 RPM. Now we want to run that for let's say 15 minutes. 
So when this is set to egg timer, you, you come out and push speed one, that means it's only gonna run for 15 minutes and that's it. So it's a one touch button and it works similar to this quick clean button I've got down here, which we're gonna show you in just a minute. So that's our egg timer setting. So we're gonna go, um, we're gonna hit escape. Or no, I'm sorry, we're gonna hit enter. And then I'm just gonna go back up and we're gonna put that in manual again because we're just gonna leave that the, the, the uh, default factory setting. All right, let's hit escape. Let's hit escape one more time because we're done in our speeds. Once again, use the arrows to scroll around through your different speeds. Um, external control, we're not doing anything with that for this. This is just standalone programming. Let's go to features, hit select, timeout. So the timeout duration, depending on whatever we're doing, is for three hours. So you can go in once again, hit select, change the duration of timeout, and you've got the timeout button here that controls that. Now we've also got quick clean, and what I like to do with quick clean is this is what I'll use for backwashing and um, different things. So I like to set up quick clean. Let's hit select. Now quick clean here is set for 2600 RPMs. What I normally like to do that is I'll set that a few hundred RPM, maybe one or 200 RPMs higher than my high speed. So our high speed right now, if you remember, that was speed five set at 2000 RPMs. So we'll go ahead and turn that to 2200 RPMs. Okay, that's set. We push enter, we lock that in, we're gonna scroll down. Now we pick a duration, this one's set for three hours. That's generally where I like to set these. So what that means now is once this is, when this is all done, I can come back here, I can push quick clean. It's gonna bump up to 2200 RPMs that we have set here, and it's gonna run for three hours. The clock's gonna tick down. And when that three hours is up, whenever that is, this thing shifts back over to its normal programming. So it's kind of a one-touch button. Now, um, that's that, let's go out of that. Priming, I usually leave that, I usually leave this as, a, as, a, as the factory default settings. Um, but this allows this thing to sense if it's prime or if it's not priming, it'll alarm out. Unlike a regular pump, if it doesn't prime, it'll just keep running and running and running and overheat. So I usually leave the priming alone. Antifreeze, this is another one I leave alone. These pumps can actually be damaged if they run at too low of a temperature. So what this does is this will actually kick on and run and it warms itself up and it also keeps the water circulating so it keeps the pool water from freezing over because it circulates and it also protects the pump. So this one is another one that's important. Um, you know, unless you're living in Hawaii or Central America or Northern Australia or whatever, um, even here in Phoenix, Arizona, we leave this antifreeze alone. We leave it enabled. So that's not even something we mess with. So now we're back to settings and that outlines how this pump works. That's your basic programming. That's gonna get you started. Um, you know, before you do, you wanna do your homework on, on water flow and things like that. And we'll get into that deeper in a different video. Now, another thing I wanna mention that I just completely forgot about is when we're all done with our settings and everything, we can go back here, we can hit the reset button. That brings us back. And now we're at the display menu. We can see we're stopped here because our light's off. Now what we're gonna do is everything's programming. I'm gonna hit my start stop button. And you hear that motor fire right up. It's gonna go through its priming cycle. You can see here the wattage it's pulling, telling us how many watts of power it's drawing. And as it runs through that priming cycle, um, it's just making sure it's getting primed up. It's got plenty of water in it. It's, it's getting its bearings, um, understanding what's going on to make sure it's got a good full prime. And then in just a second, you'll hear it drop down to its normal speed. And there it goes. So we had a thousand RPMs programmed in. So there it is. So at this point now, um, what I want to show you is kind of how quick clean works and how we revert out of quick clean if we don't want to run it. If I come here and I push quick clean, quick clean kicks on, we're up to 2200 RPM. And I'll say, hey, I just use that for backwashing. I want to shut that off. And when I hit the quick clean button, nothing happens. It doesn't shut off. Well, of course not because that's set to just run. That's a one touch button and set to just run until it's done, and until it times out. So what you can do is you come over here, you hit the start stop button once, shuts it off. Hit it again. Now we're back up to our normal speed. We'll run through its priming cycle and we're back up again. Now keep in mind, you see this thing's running at a high RPM depending on your filter size and your plumbing size. 
you may need to set that max RPM lower because more water through the filter and the plumbing doesn't necessarily mean a good thing. Um, the more, the faster water goes through a filter, the less efficient it becomes. And also, the plumbing size, depending if it's inch and a half, two inch, or two and a half inch, will only accommodate so many gallons per minute. So at some point, you're just spinning your, you're spinning your tires and wasting electricity. Um, now the next thing I want to show you is if you keep an eye on this watts right here, okay? You see it's running about a, between 130 and about 140 watts here at 1,000 RPMs. Let's go ahead and double that, and I want to show you what the watt, what the wattage is going to do. So let's bump that up to 2,000 RPMs. We're in 140-ish watts right now. Now see, we doubled our we doubled our RPM, and we're up almost uh, we're almost four times the amount of wattage. Let's see how much we go up if we go to 3,000 RPMs. Now there we go. We're almost using 10 times as many watts at 3,000 RPMs as we were at 2,000 RPMs. So that's just to give you a, a kind of a, an idea or, a, or an illustration of, of how properly programming this pump is going to maximize the energy efficiency of your pool and allow it to A, run longer, which is good for your water chemistry and algae and keeping algae growth down, um, and also save you a lot of money on your electricity. So um, once again, this is my favorite pump. The Pentair Teleflow is the only one I sell. It's the only one I tell people to buy, even if they're not going to buy it from me, because um, some of the pumps from other brands, they just don't stand up. They'll do the same They'll do the same job, but they're just not as reliable and they're just not as nice. So hope this video helped everybody.